Hey everybody, this is Pastor Tyler Baker from Valiant Baptist Church, and we're located in the Jacksonville, Florida area. So I'm coming to you with another video on the subject of alcohol in the Bible, where I'm demonstrating from Scripture that we as Christians are not only commanded to abstain from drunkenness, but we are commanded to abstain from drinking alcohol entirely. So in this particular episode, I kind of want to change gears. In the previous episodes, I was dealing with the definition of the word wine, that there are two types of wine, and that the word wine has changed over the past 400 years. Uh, originally, of course, it meant juice, and it could be referring to alcoholic juice or non-alcoholic juice. As I said, I want to change gears. I want to kind of start answering some of the counter arguments and some of the verses that people will misunderstand, and uh, uh, they believe to teach that it is permissible to drink alcohol just so long as you're not getting drunk. In this video, I want to deal with the statement of the phrase that's found in the New Testament, and particularly the pastoral epistles, and that statement is this not given to wine, and also a variation is this, not given to much wine. This statement is found in 1 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 3, the Bible says this, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Now here in 1 Timothy chapter number 3, it's actually going over the qualifications of a bishop or of a pastor. And it says that one of the qualifications is not given to wine. Now, the first way that I've heard this interpreted is that it means not to be an alcoholic, not to be given to it in the sense that you're not wholly given over toward it, you're not an alcoholic, where you, it's controlling you and ha you have to keep going back to it. Now, I'm going to explain to you from Scripture, comparing Scripture to Scripture, what this actually means in a moment. Second interpretation that I've heard is that you should not be drinking it at all, that you are not visiting it, that you are not going to it, that you are not given to it, saying that you are not partaking in it. And that is actually the correct definition of this. This similar phrase is found in this same chapter in verse number eight. Speaking of deacons, it says this, likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. So people will oftentimes look at this verse and they'll say, well, the Bible says, you know, not given to much wine. And their conclusion is, therefore they can drink wine. Now, this is a logical fallacy to say, oh, okay, just because it's commanded that we can't be, you know, that we shouldn't be given to much wine, uh, that must mean that we can be given to some wine. Well, that's not what this is saying at all. And there's one word that disproves that. The very first word of that verse says this, likewise. So it first gives us in 1 Timothy chapter number 3 the qualifications for a pastor, but then it goes on to give us the qualifications of a deacon, and it begins when it's giving the qualifications of the deacon with this, likewise. If you know what that means, it's saying in the same way. So he's basically saying in the same way that the bishop didn't do this, then the deacon also shouldn't do this. In the same way that the, the bishop shouldn't be greedy of filthy lucre, the deacon also shouldn't be greedy of filthy lucre. Well, what that tells us is that the qualifications that were listed there for the pastor are exactly the same for the deacon and that they're just being repeated. So they are interchangeable. Now, now I'm going to go ahead and interpret for you what it means when it says not given to wine. And I'm going to prove to you that it's actually telling you that you are to abstain from it completely. I want you to look with me at Titus chapter number one, verse number seven. It says this, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Now there again, we find the phrase not given to wine. So we've looked at all three mentions of that phrase. One time, the variation where it says not given to much wine, but also I want to focus on another statement that's found here in verse number seven. And this is of course a parallel with first Timothy chapter number three, both are qualifications given to the bishop or the pastor. Notice that it says at the end of verse number seven, not given to filthy lucre. Now, obviously, no person would look at that and say, well, that's just telling you that you can partake in a little bit of filthy lucre. Everyone understands that it's wrong for a Christian to be taking any filthy lucre. None of it is allowable. Not even a penny, not a drop, nothing. Not uh, uh, anything at all, period. So now we have a definition of what the Bible means when it says not given to. 
Obviously, it's saying here, it's using that same phrase to express that you shouldn't partake in it at all. So now that we have a definition, we can go back and we can look at 1 Timothy chapter number 3. When it's speaking unto the bishop, it says, not given to wine. So what does that mean? That means that he can't partake in it at all. That means that he can't have any of it. Just like he can't have any of the filthy lucre, he can't have any of the wine. And then when it goes on to speak to the deacon, it says likewise, meaning in the same way that of the qualifications of the bishop that he's not to be given to wine. Now that we have a definition of that, it means that he can't have any of it. That is allowing the Bible to define the Bible. And when we do so, we walk away seeing that these verses do not at all support that you can drink a little bit of wine. They do not at all support that you just can't be an alcoholic. They actually teach that you, that at least in this case, the pastor and the deacon should not be taking part at all in any alcohol period. Now this creates a major problem for those that believe that wine is alcoholic every time and it's mentioned. Those same people believe that Jesus Christ at the Last Supper actually partook in alcoholic wine. So therefore, they believe that in the local New Testament church, when we partake in the Lord's Supper each time, we should be drinking alcoholic wine. So now what they have, according to their interpretation, is a pastor and a deacon that are not even permitted to partake in their own local New Testament church's Lord's Supper because they're, of course, drinking alcoholic wine, and they are commanded to abstain from any wine at all, period. But of course, that's the wrong interpretation. The word wine in the Bible can be good and bad. It can be alcoholic and non-alcoholic. And when we partake in the Lord's Supper, we are partaking in what is symbolic of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, the wine that we drink is the pure blood of the grape. It's non-alcoholic wine. God bless you and have a good day.